Hello, my name is Nigel Palmer and I'm the author of the book The Regenerative Grower's Guide to Garden Amendments. In this short video, we'll explore making vinegar extractions using apple cider vinegar, organic apple cider vinegar. Vinegar extractions are really important because uh, not only do you get a broad spectrum mineral amendment with uh, just about any mineral you need or want in proportions that plants will like, but you also get high concentrations of minerals like calcium and phosphorus that can be used uh, selectively throughout the growing season to help plants with specific growing cycles. These mineral amendments are shelf stable, so they'll sit on the shelf for years and you're diluting them at concentrations of 1 to 500 to 1 to 1000. So one quart of this mineral amendment really turns out to be about 125 gallons of very, very useful uh, garden or farm mineral amendments. Vinegar extractions. In order to make vinegar extracted eggshells, I save my eggshells in jars to cook them all at once rather than cook them individually. This jar is a jar of uh, toasted eggshells ready to make extractions. Roasting eggshells with a toaster oven is really simple. Just spread the eggs out and we'll put it in there and hit toast. I have this set on light toast and there's a one time through the light toast setting. We'll give this another go. Here they are after a second go, and you can think things have turned colors. Um, I'm going to give this one more time, give it a third toast on light. Uh, again, uh, experimenting with settings and uh, number of iterations. Third iteration. And after three goes, well, those are looking pretty good. Got that discoloration going. The organic matter is crunchy and we'll give it a fourth iteration just to show what that does. Um, normally I would I would call this done but we can go a fourth time. So this is a fourth iteration light toast and we'll take a look at this. Those are good. Those are done. So in this case I'd say those are a little overdone, but that's not going to hurt us. Um, so three light toasts was an optimal way to go. Uh, these can be now stored in a jar. We'll just throw them in here. All right. Eggshells can also be cooked in a skillet simply by putting the eggshells in the skillet and roasting them with that sort of action until they also become discolored. Bones and oyster shells I often cook on a grill. I usually cook at about 350 degrees for 40 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe even 50 minutes depending. Uh, oyster shells a little bit less than bones. These bones have been on the grill at 350 degrees for 40 minutes and they, I flip them uh, to try and be consistent but uh, these are ready to be used for making a vinegar extraction of bones. These happen to be cow bones. This three liter can can be used to cook bones and shells as well by putting holes in the can um, and opening up the top. Bones can be put in there or oyster shells and then they can be left on an open flame in the fire pit overnight um, and retrieved in the morning.
I have a variety of cooked items on my shelf. As they become available, I'll cook them and put them in jars. In this case, there's some bones from cows, pigs, eggshells, and oyster shells um, all ready for vinegar extraction. And uh, this allows me to have materials on hand um, in case I run out throughout the growing season. To actually make the vinegar extraction, put the eggshells into a jar, crushing them up just a little bit to increase the surface area. Don't crush them too much. And you want to fill the jar about 10% of the volume with the eggshells. Something like that. And then add organic apple cider vinegar. You want to leave some space at the top for the reaction to have space to occur on. This is going to bubble up and you don't want it to go over the top. And then, of course, most importantly is to label the jar so that when you come back and look at it, sometime later you'll understand what was in it. Now let's watch this reaction. You can already start to see the bubbles forming in there. How fun is that? Vinegar extracted eggshells. And we'll store that on a plate with a light cover so the gases can escape and if anything does froth over the top it'll land on the plate and not make a mess. We'll store this in the corner of the kitchen or any other stable place out of sunlight. After about a week or two um, the reaction will stop and it can be decanted and then more vinegar added for a second extraction. You can see that the eggshell has responded very quickly to the apple cider vinegar and popped the top and uh, left quite the foam on the top. That's why you keep it on a plate. Decanting is very simple. Um, in this case I had two eggshell vinegar extractions on my shelf that had been sitting around for some time. So I'm going to put all of these into one container because it's kind of a mishmash and I've labeled it eggshell vinegar extraction multiple sources December 31st 2020. And you can see this is very easy to do. Use a, a funnel of sorts and a sieve and I'm simply going to pour the liquid through. And the residual material I could put under a perennial plant or on the compost pile. Looks like this is pretty full. I'll just add a little bit more to top it off. And I have a quart of shelf stable vinegar extracted eggshell for use in the garden. Decanting is done with a funnel and a sieve. Funnel just to hold the sieve, support the sieve, and make it easier to pour. Vinegar extractions are an extremely useful garden farming tool. Um, it allows closing of the waste gaps using oyster shells from a restaurant that would have been thrown away. Uh, the bones after making bone broth that would have been thrown out or thrown on the compost pile, uh, eggshells that might have been thrown away, 
And this one quart of vinegar extraction is not only shelf stable, but also, as I mentioned earlier, uh, is diluted at ratios 1 to 500 or 1 to 1,000, making over uh, 125 gallons of mineral amendment. Um, examples of the composition of the vinegar extractions can be found in the appendix of my book, uh, and that actually shows the broad distribution of minerals that are in these uh, products, minerals like selenium and cobalt and uh, manganese and molybdenum uh, that might be difficult to source. Uh, quickly, it's realized that all of these minerals are had by these sorts of processes and it makes them uh, very important processes and makes the availability of these uh, otherwise um, not often thought of uh, elements quite uh, approachable for the backyard gardener or farmer.